Alright friends, welcome back to Insight for 21st week from 23rd May to 29th May. We are continuing with the series of organization and its role. And let us look at 12 more organizations. First one is APEDA, APEDA. This is Agricultural and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority. And several people confuse it with Agriculture Ministry. But please don't forget this APEDA is with Ministry of Commerce and Industry and it was established in the year 1986 and the basic purpose of APEDA is to look at the export of fruits, vegetables and their processed products, meat and meat products, poultry and poultry products and dairy products and at the same time, it also looks at uh, development of uh, industries uh, pertaining to the export of the said products. That means the role of APEDA is also to develop industries relating to the scheduled products, uh, whatever we have discussed just now for export by way of providing financial assistance. And APEDA also looks at the fixing of standards and specifications to improve packaging and at the same time it looks at the marketing of the products for the purpose of exports. Look at the next organization, Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority. It is a statutory body as per PFRDA Act of 2013 and this PFRDA Act 2013 came into force on 1st February 2014. It is a statutory body under the Ministry of Finance. Basically, this Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority was established to promote, develop and regulate the pension sector in the country. And from the year 2004, there was a major change in the pension system. The pension system was switched over to contributory pension system with effect from 1st January 2004 and which was named subsequently as National Pension System. So, National Pension System was implemented from 1st January 2004 for the employees and subsequently from 1st May 2009 it was extended to all the citizens of the country and to act as modal regulator for promotion and development of organized pension system in the country, this PFRDA was established. Right? So, if someone talks about PFRDA, it looks at the development of organized pension system in the country. Look at the next organization that is the DICGC. DICGC is Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation. This is a fully owned subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India. One of the deputy governor will be its chairman. So, DICGC is a fully owned by Reserve Bank of India. DICGC gives insurance protection to the customers of banks. Whether we have deposit in public sector bank, whether we have deposit in private sector bank, foreign bank operating in our country, local area banks, then cooperative banks, all are covered under this deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation and each and every customer of the bank will get up to a maximum of rupees 1 lakh in case of liquidation of the bank. Due to whatever the reason, if a bank collapses, then each and every customer is entitled to a maximum insurance of rupees 1 lakh. So, that is the main duty or purpose of DICGC and the required premium for giving this protection is paid by respective bank but not by the customer. That is important point. So, if someone talks about DICGC, this is a wholly owned subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India. Indian Council of Agricultural Research. This was established in the year 1929. It was established as a society under Societies Act of 1860 and it is under the Department of Agricultural Research and Education under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and 
it was established in 1929 and it is the apex body for coordinating the research and education in agriculture and icar played key role in green revolution of 1960s and at the same time it has also played a major role in promoting excellence in higher education in agriculture so icar is the premier research organization under the department of agricultural research and education it was established in 1929 under the societies act of 1860 Look into the next one employees provident fund organization employees provident fund organization is under the administrative control of ministry of labor and employment and please don't forget the pension fund regulatory and development authority what we have learned just now that is the pfrda is with ministry of finance whereas this provident fund organization that is employees provident fund organization is with ministry of labor and employment the basic purpose of this employees provident fund organization is to look at the provident funds for employees in factories and other establishments and the board administers a contributory provident fund not only that pension scheme not only that insurance scheme for the workforce engaged in organized sector in the country so there are three schemes run by employees provident fund organization one is as per employees provident fund scheme of 1952 second one is as per employees pension scheme of 1995 and the third one is as per the employees deposit linked insurance scheme of 1976 so employees provident fund organization is with the ministry of labor and employment csir csir is a reputed body dedicated for research in science and technology this is the council of scientific and industrial research this is autonomous body under the department of science and technology ministry of science and technology and it is the premier industrial research and development organization in india established in 1942 as a society under the societies act of 1860 and it research covers wide spectrum of science and technology is used starting from radio and space physics oceanography geophysics biotechnology and nanotechnology and csir has got wide network of 38 national laboratories 39 outreach centers and three innovation complexes and in the filing of patents also CSIR is ahead CSIR files about 200 Indian patents and 250 foreign patents every year and out of the filed patents around 14% are licensed the number which is respectable and which is much above the global average so csir is one of the most reputed research organizations in the country dedicated to the research in science and technology established in 1942 and at present under the department of science and technology look into the next one unique identification authority of india this is uidai the administrative control of uidai was recently shifted from niti aayog to ministry of communications and information technology specifically now it is with the department of electronics and information technology or dt under the ministry of communications and it and uidai is vested with the task of giving 12 digit individual identification number and the 12 digit unique identification number is given on behalf of government of india and recently government passed aadhar act now statutory status was given to uidai 
and at the same time Aadhaar is being linked to bank accounts, voter IDs, pensions and also to Mahatma Gandhi Narega database. Look into the next one, Deepam. What is meant by Deepam? Deepam is the Department of Investment and Public Asset Management. This Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, previous name was Department of Disinvestment. The name was changed recently. So, this Department of Investment and Public Asset Management looks at the issues pertaining to disinvestment in public sector enterprises. And the main purpose of Deepam is to promote people's ownership of central public sector enterprises. And at the same time, it is also the responsibility of Deepam to unlock true value of CPSCs for investors, employees and government. And the proceeds from disinvestment of central public sector enterprises are channelized into National Investment Fund. Very important, the disinvestment proceeds are channelized into National Investment Fund. Right? And if someone talks about disinvestment, the department concerned is Department of Investment and Public Asset Management. NHRC, National Human Rights Commission. Basically, National Human Rights Commission was established as per Protection of Human Rights Act of 1993. And National Human Rights Commission believes that promotion and protection of the human rights of the weakest sections of the society is the utmost need of the hour so as to promote equity in development. And it firmly believes economic upliftment and empowerment of Dalits is the most effective tool to combat the casteism. And it recommends to the government for improving the quality of governance. Right friends, look at the next one. NTCA. NTCA is National Tiger Conservation Authority. All of you are well aware about Project Tiger. Project Tiger was formulated in the year 1973, primarily to conserve the population of tigers in the country. And NTCA was established as a statutory body under the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change, basically to implement Project Tiger. And this NTCA was constituted under the provisions of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 as amended in 2006. And please don't forget this Project Tiger is a totally centrally sponsored scheme providing funding support to Tiger Range states. Right? So, if someone talks about NTCA, that is basically to conserve the population of tigers in the country, that is to implement the project tiger. Look into the next one, Defense Research and Development Organization. This DRDO is the research organization under the Ministry of Defense and its main task is to design, develop and produce state-of-the-art sensors, weapon systems, platforms and allied equipment required for our defense services. And at the same time, its task is also to develop infrastructure and to develop quality manpower and build a strong technology base for the country. So, DRDO is the premier research organization under the Department of Defense Research and Development, Ministry of Defense. Look at the last one that is the Competition Commission of India. Competition Commission of India basically established as per Competition Act of 2002 so as to ensure a fair competition. This was established in the year 2003. And the basic purpose is to eliminate practices that will have adverse effects on competition. And basically, promoting competition is the important trait of this Competition Commission of India. Without competition, what will happen? Monopolistic tendencies will increase in the market. So, as to eliminate monopolistic tendencies, this Competition Commission of India looks at fair competition. 
so if someone talks about fair trade regulator in the country that is a cci or competition commission of india right friends with this let us conclude the organization and its role for 21st week have a nice day thank you